Welcome back to another episode of Dip It. This week we will be dipping coffee beans. There was a post on Instagram from Bob Claggett of I Like To Make Stuff, and he posted a coffee bean countertop, and it got linked back to me. It was encased in resin. And while I don't quite have the revenue to buy that many gallons of resin, I think I can do something small with it. So let's give it a shot. My molds are usually just made on the fly because um, I don't make the same thing over and over again, so I don't know, it doesn't seem to make any sense to me to keep a mold. All right, so let's pour our first layer. And we're just gonna pour in our first layer. And again, this is only two ounces. Oh, is there something in there? It's an eyelash. I'm losing it's eyelash. High pour, helps to break up the bubbles. You see with the white on white on white, but um, there are definitely some bubbles there, so I'm gonna go ahead and pop them. Oh, it's like crazy hard to see. Right, now I'll come back out in a couple hours after that's set, and we'll move on to the next step. Got myself some coffee, super cheap coffee, and somebody mentioned on Twitter, the oil in here will mess up the cast. They said just douse them in a little denatured alcohol. That'll help cut the oil. Alright, so it's been about an hour since I soaked the beans and they all feel dry. So we're going to go ahead and um, dip them in epoxy. <laughs> I'm going to pour a little bed down and I'm going to layer the coffee beans right in the middle here. So I just want these little fellas in the middle. The previous layer is actually still a little sticky, so I'm kind of shoving them into it a little bit. It's, um, it's actually not very attractive right now. It's been a day. I was... Stuff got in the way and I didn't get a chance to come back out and do the final pour yesterday. I'm just going to fill it all the way up to the top. Looking pretty good. Definitely going to have some bubble issues here. Is by far my favorite part. I will let this set up and see what it looks like. Now I understand that making a cut on aluminum on the bandsaw is not a huge deal, but the truth is I've never done it before, so I'm a little nervous about the process. If there's a tool that's going to work on aluminum in my shop, this is going to be the one. So here's my blank, fresh out of the mold. I had a little trouble getting out of the mold. I don't know what it is with me and molds. Now the point here is to take a really light pass and try to remove as many ridges as you can. You got one right there. just got a catch and um, yeah, it's just there's just no fix in that it's just totally loose now uh... all right so let's jump forward two weeks so here's my second blank that just happened to magically appear at the same stage it is held firmly with the chuck and let's go from there <laughs> Alright, and I've got a nice handle shape that I like, and what I will do is I'll drill for mounting it, and then I can reverse it and clean up the end. Bar. I'm not sure what happened, but the resin's kind of gummy. Um, it hasn't, didn't quite harden up perfectly, so the threads aren't cutting in it. So, I cut off the top on the bandsaw, 
and rough sanded it on the belt sander. Um, and I've just got it here mounted on a dowel. And that is not holding at all. I'm feeling for ridges with my thumb. I'm just doing my best with which is a not an ideal situation here. It's going to look really neat when it's done. Oh. I'll keep at it. <laughs> All right, so it came out pretty good. The, one of the very first projects I ever made was actually a coffee tamper. So I've had one in my house made out of walnut since 2009, and I use it at least once a week, if not multiple times. Details on this. There's some that came through, and so you've got this cool effect in the front here. You can buy tamper bases, uh, and they're usually stainless steel. But I don't have the tools to work stainless steel, and I really wanted to make my own. So I went with aluminum, and it was fairly easy to cut with regular old woodworking tools and my scraper. So, yeah, I would definitely work with aluminum again. It was pretty fun. I get comments all the time, and I just wanted to give an update on the bacon handle vegetable peeler. And it's holding up really well. I honestly can't tell any difference from the first day it was cast. <laughs> I, uh, I imagine it will be in there for a very long time. So I will keep doing the dippets for as long as people are interested in them. If you like it, please share it. That'll actually help this out a lot. Um, oh, and now my next project is going to be a little different. I'm going to make something out of wood. Uh, I know, I know, we will all get through it. Just trust me on this.